Hey everybody, this is Dan from Pain Free You. I have the pleasure of speaking with Nate Carlson from Iowa, and uh, he's decided to share his mind body TMS perceived danger pain success story with the world. And uh, welcome, Nate. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Dan? I'm doing great as well. So if you would, why don't you uh, tell me and the audience a little story as to what you've been through, where you've been, how, how you got here, and a little bit of that journey. Absolutely. Well, I, I'd first like to say thank you to you, Dan, for providing this opportunity. This is a big step, I think, in the overall success of everything, which I'll probably get into a little bit later. Uh, and also, anybody, too, that's watching this right now, please understand that you are watching this for a reason. And uh, something brought you here. It's not coincidental. And I just, I hope that you can see the hope, and especially through hearing my story of how long of a journey it was and how great the outcome is at the end. So maybe what I'll start is, if I go way back to childhood, um, it's pretty uneventful. You know, for the most part, I grew up in a small town, small community. Um, Nothing really incredibly eventful, I would say, that was horribly traumatic in my life or anything. Uh, there were some things now when I look back that were, uh, you know, indicators that maybe that something wasn't necessarily correct. Um, I was good at, I, was, I played sports. Um, it was expected, you know, academia and things like that where, you know, you put your best effort in and so on. And maybe looking back, I can see a few things where I was a, I was a bigger kid. And I probably had a lot of self-image type issues really when I look back. And so that was always kind of a big part of, of things I did um, just from a motivational standpoint. Like when I was 13, 14 years old, this isn't something very common for males, but I, I was diagnosed with anorexia. And that was a pretty big um, event in my life. Um, I look back and think uh, I was going to take control over something in my life. And I took, did take control over it to the point where it was very self-destructive. And I really didn't know how to pull myself out of that one and, and got medical treatment and got me on the right, on the right road and, and some of those things. But, you know, that was kind of, I look back and think that was kind of a self-destructive type uh, behavior I was, I was having. And I actually had some of these other ones. I won't go into much detail about those, but I, I look back and go, why were you doing that? Why were you doing that? And, and a lot of it had to do with self-validation. I needed to be validated. I needed to feel something. I don't know what it was. I'm, um, you know, everything I've listened to is, you know, it's nobody's fault, including, you know, whatever symptoms and illness or whatever you want to call it I had, primarily symptom sensations. It's not my fault. It's not my parents' fault. It's not anybody's fault in my life. And that's been something very big for me through this journey, um, through the recovery phase, just because there isn't any bitter feelings and it's more about bringing some of these emotions, maybe that had been repressed in the past, you know, up to the surface, but not using them as, a, as an ax to grind or something like that towards somebody else. I'm not casting the blame on somebody else. And so, you know, I'm able to look back at my earlier years and it made me see a few things. But at that time, I, I was a kid. I had no idea what was going on. And uh, after high school, pretty normal. Um, I, was, I was always interested in math and science and taking things apart. So I went to college for engineering. And really, college was pretty uneventful, too, <laughs> for that, for the, through this whole journey. Um, Went to a school nearby, had some internships, had some opportunity to live in different parts of the country. Um, but for the most part, there really wasn't anything, anything significant. And but at this time, too, though, if I go back to some of the maybe the body image things I was concerned about and, and weight and, and so on, I um, got actually into exercise when I was in college, weightlifting, running, these types of things. And by the end of college, I was probably the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life. And so I get done with college and get a job, move to Iowa, and everything's pretty normal. I'm just, again, uh, living life, going to work, um, working out, trying to make healthy decisions, so on and so forth. I mean, really, I was in the prime health of my life 
and then it happened. And probably when I was about 26, I developed low back pain. Sounds very familiar, Dan. I mean, I, when I heard your story the first time, I was like, man, this, this is like a, a record of me. And I developed low back pain and I, I went to the doctor, not much there, you know, primary care physician, so on. Uh, I had been seeing chiropractors in the past just for some routine maintenance or other things, uh, whether I uh, football playing in high school or something stupid I did in college, weightlifting, and so on. And so I would go to my chiropractor and through the course of about two, three months, this, this, this low back pain uh, got to the point where it was starting to become excruciating. It was very difficult to sit. It would then even hurt when I would lay down. And my chiropractor made the comment, look, you're just too tight. I cannot adjust you. And I thought, oh, now what do I do now? And he referred me to a massage therapist in town. And uh, this was probably one of the biggest blessings I'd had through everything because she still to this day is a sister to me. And I'll, I'll get into some of this stuff in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw her uh, very therapeutic. Um, for those interested in anatomy, it's a deep flexor muscle. It's a psoas that affects your low back. And I started seeing her. I kept going to the chiropractor. At this time, also, I was put on a muscle relaxant through my primary. So right now, I'm, I'm seeing massage, chiropractor, and I'm on my first medication at about 26, 27 years old. And I'm, I'm 45 now. So that was about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, for about the next year or two years, it was a little bit of a of a, just a rehabilitation process, I would say, from going from excruciating low back pain to in a couple of years, about a year and a half, I was, I was healthy enough now where I stopped taking the muscle relaxants. Mm -hmm. However, during this time period too, this is where uh, some of the uh, obsessive compulsive maybe started with self-care. I started stretching every morning and every night 20, 25 minutes to a half an hour. And I found if I did not do that, it, I would pay for it somehow, some way, shape or form, et cetera. And also about this same time, I had to be pretty careful about um, somewhat overdoing it physically because I would throw my low back out. And then for two, three weeks, I'd have to crawl out of that hole in a couple of months, I throw my back out again. I'd have to crawl out of that hole. And that's where this pattern really started in my life. And during this time period, I got married, started having kids. Life was just going on. Um, work was always been stable. I've, I've worked for the same company for 22 years. Um, so there hasn't been any drastic change there or anything. Mm -hmm. And I would say about the next eight to nine years, roughly, is was pretty stable. I'll call it that. It was, it was, it was certainly very repeatable. The, the self-care was there. Uh, I'd still get massage. I go to the chiropractor when needed, uh, but no meds, no anything like that. And then when I was probably about, yeah, eight, nine years, I was in my, my young thirties, maybe 35, um, something new had happened. And I, I don't know what it was. I can't really tie it back necessarily to any event in my life, but I started getting um, some deep skeletal muscular pain behind my right calf. And now in hindsight, even through these 10 years of pretty stable, I still didn't feel that great. I mean, I was really just doing the work to not feel bad not to necessarily feel good. And this is when I, I got really scared because all my, everything in my wheelhouse that I knew how to treat specific things was no longer working. The massage wasn't necessarily really working. Chiro wasn't working. I went back to my primary and it was, uh, you know, the, the pain behind the right calf started manifesting itself more just on the entire right side of my body. And I could not have any understanding of what is going on. So at this point, I went back to my primary. 
I was back on muscle relaxants mm -hmm. and uh, I continued to get the treatment that I would normally get massage and Cairo were the primary two. I continued to stretch. I was a huge water drinker too. Th these things, you know, that you just incorporate because they're healthy, you know, into your life, sure. pretty big water drinker. And, um, it continually got worse that, that pain, it was like a deep shearing, um, like next to the bone almost. And I could tell that the tonicity on the right side of my body, um, was tighter. And so going through this for the next year or two years it started manifesting self all right sided. Then I started getting a lot of mid back pain. Then just the whole right side was just not happy. It was, it hurt to sit. It hurt to stand. Um, at this point in my life, I knew the best I was ever going to feel was the second I woke up before my foot hit the ground. That's what kind of mindset I was at that sure. time. And it was, it was pretty bad. Um, but throughout all this, I always had a, I'm never going to give up attitude. I'm going to keep seeking the next thing and seeking the next thing, which actually then ends up feeding on it <laughs> a little bit in hindsight, right? Because you're, you're constantly looking for that next thing, that next thing, that solution, that solution. And I was chasing the wrong thing, so to speak, from a root cause standpoint. So at, at this point, I had some other people, you know, refer, well, maybe it's a strength issue, Nathan. Well, okay, fine. So I started doing Pilates at that time. And I will say that I started getting some relief from a strength issue with the massage, with the chiropractic, but nothing was making it go away. It was always there, still on the meds. And so at this point, th this, is how, this is how significant it was in my life. Um, back in 2013, so about nine years ago, driving to work, I had this conviction that, well, if massage therapy and this type of modalities are so important, I should probably be go become a massage therapist. Now, mind you, my pain at that time was very high, married, three young children. Um, so then I went to massage school for a year. And so I still did the full-time job. I would travel 10 hours a week, go to school 20 hours a week, um, just to put another knowledge and skill in my repertoire, so to speak, of trying to manage my health. And I look back and I go, I, I have no idea how I did that. I sitting in a car that those many hours and it, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I don't want to have to do that again. Let me put it that way. And so I, I graduate massage school and um, actually I started practicing because I know it's very beneficial and I, I enjoyed it. I was a little bit of a, an escape now that I think about it because I was able just to focus on one thing and not have all this other noise in my head and so on. Uh, so that's going on. Health continued to kind of stay the same with the exception of I started incorporating more and more self-help or self-care into my, my, uh, my routine. And so for me, I have got Inversion table, I have low back traction, I have neck traction, I have got more TENS units than I know what to do with. I have, I have, I have all these things. And my self-care turned into almost an hour in the morning and close to an hour and a half at night. So in a 24-hour day, I'm spending somewhere between two and three plus hours stretching, doing all these things to just not feel horrible. Mm -hmm. And it was weighing on me, family, all these different things. And, um, and it was, it, it, it never really got better. I never, every once in a while, I would see maybe a little thing, but it, it always seemed to be a cumulative, the symptoms or the, the intensity of the symptoms. And so if, if somebody were to ask me, what did it feel like? And so for me, I'd be, well, imagine where you're wearing a wetsuit. Now imagine half of your wetsuit is about half the size it should be. So it's tight. And that's what it felt like I was walking around all day long. So everything I did was to try to stretch out that really tight wetsuit over on the right-hand side. 
And the, I'd been to Spain, you know, pain management, pain this, pain that. And it was usually just meds or something else. Um, I'd had all the imaging done to this point too, multiple MRIs, uh, multiple x-rays, so on. Well, so this went on for probably about another three, four years. And then um, it changed a little bit. And um, the pain really got up into my right side over here. Um, all the muscles on the right side of my face were like rock hard. And so I kind of understand what I'm about ready to tell you, but I don't really understand it. So okay. my, my head was, I, bear, it, I'm telling you it was real, but it was weird. Um, so I was very stuck in anatomy and physiology, especially just with my schooling and I enjoy it. And I started thinking about upper cervical, C1, C2. And I know that there's a whole upper cervical chiropractic modality out there. So I went and saw an upper cervical chiropractor that does it. I mean, they specialize in upper cervical. Well, anyway, he adjusted me and all my symptoms turned off for about three weeks. And I think back to that, I can't really explain it other than it was enough of a blow, a shock, punch to the overall nervous system. My nervous system didn't really know how to respond to it, you know, at that point. Well, problem is the symptoms came back and they came back even greater. And, um, you know, this, this is getting to the point where, you know, crying in bed, <laughs> hoping for the absolute worst, you know, thinking, you know, if I just didn't have a right side of the body or a right leg, this would feel a lot better. So, I mean, you actually start playing these things out in your head and sure. it's, it's crazy to think that, but at the same time, it's, it, it's that significant. So for any of you out there that have had those kinds of thoughts and feelings and just know that you are not alone because I get the torture that, and the bondage that pain can put you under. Sure. Well, Things didn't get any better. Then uh, we had some stressful things uh, in our in our family, and I finally went to Mayo. Right, Mayo is the king of the Western medicine allopathic world. I went to Mayo. I went through every single protocol they had, and in the end, Nathan, we can't find anything wrong with you. <laughs> okay, so I was officially diagnosed back in fifteen with. They couldn't even call it fibromyalgia because it was only on the right side of my body. So they had to call it regional chronic pain syndrome. And at that point, I was put on two other medications, gabapentin, pretty low dose, and then uh, Cymbalta, which is an SNRI, which is actually used to treat depression. But they were finding that through fibromyalgia patients that the, the effects on the serotonin and norepinephrine would actually, the feel-good chemicals would have a positive impact with those that were diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And now thinking about that, I can think why with the brain and body connection, why that, that could be. Now, it wasn't a very pleasant medication. Um, so anyway, Mayo's done. I just hit the pinnacle. There is nowhere else to go, right? I got to the end of the line. They put me on Cymbalta. The next three months were not the most fun because of the side effects as it builds up in your system and everything it stabilized, plateaued. Um, it maybe made me feel a little bit better physically, but no, in, in hindsight, it was maybe more of a placebo effect than right. anything else. And so you fast forward next three years, four years, 2015, 18. So I lived this way up until fall of last year. It was, it was October. And actually, so everything was still stable. I mean, my, my routines were still an hour, two hours every morning, every night, uh, still on all the same medication, going to massage, going to chiropractor, all mm -hmm. these different things just to not feel horrible. And it was uh, in spring of 21, I had a friend at work actually that um, I didn't know what he was going through, but he shared brain neuroplasticity with me in its most broadest sense. And what he shared with me, I just, I, I refuted. 
I thought there's no way possible that this could be anything in my head. And I'm sure everybody's had that same thought to a certain extent. Sure. And, and so I, I kept it on the shelf. Life was going on. Well, last fall, um, just everything came to, came to a head. There's things in my life that I, so I couldn't get the massage care. There were other stress in my life and this was all building up and I really started freaking out. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, the fear was incredible. And so I finally was like, fine, I'll do it. Uh, so what it was, was it was dynamic neural uh, plasticity retraining system. Um, it's a NRS. Yep. And mm -hmm. developed by Annie Hopper. Yeah, I know. Yep. Familiar. So I got the DVD set and here's the profoundness on people's stories. I turn these DVDs on, I'm watching it and you start getting these individual stories of this hellacious nightmare they were living. And it's just, it's resonating with you. And, but then they hear all the pot and then you get to hear the positives as well too. And an hour into it, I'm like, I have this. I absolutely have this. And there was nothing that, so at that point, I was 100% convinced, no doubt. I watched the DVDs. Uh, I didn't really start incorporating some of the different protocols involved with it. Um, but I was able to consciously observe my thoughts. And I could, and I didn't like actually what I was thinking. It was a lot of um, lecturing to other people. That's a validation thing. It was, it was catastrophizing everything. Um, yep. And I just, yeah. And, and actually my symptoms came up for a little bit because I was more aware with them. But there's some of these strategies to kind of suppress them, get this nervous system down a little bit. And part of it too is you're supposed to find these joyful times in your life. And I'll be honest, I mean, I... I couldn't find them. I mean, I love a lot of people. I, I know I'm loved, but I couldn't find these, these areas of joy. And so about a week after I watched uh, the video, actually, even though I was totally committed to it, I understood what it was and so on. My symptoms came back. And I thought, what in the world now? So I put the DVDs back in and Bill, I'll never forget this guy's name, said something that clicked in my head. And it went from just not stopping the negative thinking, these negative things, but more embracing and looking at the positive. And that's where really when things turned around for me. This was a bit, this would have been October of last year. So this was almost a year ago. And it was hard right away. Um, but it got better. And so Christmas was great that year. I mean, I was feeling such a reduction in symptoms. And the thing that was really interesting too is, I don't know, I'm an engineer, so I'm kind of living in this empirical world. Mm -hmm. So I'd had a massage therapist on my, on my tissue for 20 years. And she's saying, your tissue is changing. You know, and, and the chiropractor I'd seen for up to eight years at this point, like you're physically changing. So that was just some more affirmation for me. Not that I needed it, but I still, I still appreciate it. And I can see the evidence in it. So why do you think your tissue changed? Uh, Cause my, my, well, what I think it was, was, okay. So I don't fully understand all the mechanisms that go on, but I was constantly in fight or flight before. And so it was this increased tonus in, in the tissue and something else. So along with the pain I'd always had, I, I'd always, cause people ask me, well, and I didn't wear my pain on my sleeve. I mean, very few people actually, other than, you know, those that are closer to me even knew what I was going through. I didn't, I didn't walk around hunched over or anything like that. Sure. Um, but when I would describe it to them, other than the, you know, the wetsuit, that's too, too small on one side. I always felt this like low voltage on the right side of my body. And so I think it had to do with an overactive nervous system um, that was creating the muscle to, uh, the muscle tightness. Um, and somehow 
the brain was doing that. And as the brain got calmed down, it wasn't completely looking for danger and looking for everything else. And in total fear, my overall nervous system was able to, to reduce. I mean, let's put it this way. Muscle tension is a protective mechanism, yeah. right? If it looks like somebody's going to punch you, what do you do? You tense <laughs> up, right? Right. Somebody's like, let me punch you in the stomach. What are you going to do? You're going to tighten it up. It's a protective mechanism. So when you are walking around with this level of symptoms and pain for all those years, your subconscious brain just says, protect, guard, tense. I walked like I was a robot for well over a decade because my brain was in a protective mode where it said, be tense, be tight, because if you're too loose, you're going to hurt something. And so, you know, we don't have to worry about the mechanism and, and all that stuff. We just know that, you know, fear creates tension, period, end of story. And when you're going there to get fixed by the massage or the chiropractic, you're sitting there going, ah, fix me. And you're so tense and tight. And they're like, dude, we can't even move you, let alone, let alone fix you. And so once you started to learn a little bit more accurately that, okay, this is a brain thing. There's not anything wrong with my body. And you said, I have this. What did your brain do with the fear? It went, oh, good. And everything relaxed. So I just wanted to make that point while you're talking. Go ahead. You can keep going. (laughs) And may I just say, this is one reason I love listening to you every single morning. The So I, I was trying to explain it through this huge no, it's simple, right? It's just, you know, this comes back to the accurate knowledge that you work off. So no, mm-hmm. I, I appreciate that. Um, things are going really well. Um, so October, January 15th, I was, my, my daughter had a bunch of friends over for a, a slumber party. And I remember being on the, washing the table off. I remember thinking, you know, my, I think my medication's holding me back. And so three months after, and I'd already talked to my primary about all this. So he, he knew what was going on and, and he gave me, you know, permission to manage it how I wanted to manage it. Mm-hmm. So within three months of starting uh, the program, I was medication free. Awesome. And I remember thinking I mean, this, the celebration I was having internally for that was incredible. Not, not just, it had to do with all these years of being, I'll, I call it bondage to this protocol, this medicine, doing this, not doing this. You are in absolute bondage. And I just lifted this huge one from me mm-hmm. and incredible. Well, Things were going on, but I still was having, so at that point though, I was able to, I had issues sleeping at that point and I couldn't really figure out what was going on. And so everything prior to this didn't have anything to do with like, there was very little discussion about repressed emotions, Uh, you know, Sarno's um, look at it. And so this was just trying to me elevate my mood and and things like that and, and to, not even tell at that point I really wasn't even understanding the 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 PDP part of it right the perceived danger pain that Mm -hmm. that that I had not heard yet and but I was still getting all these benefits just from I would call it a reassociation within the brain to certain things that Mm -hmm. that's what it that's what it was well then I all of a sudden sleeping became a problem and it's not that I was tired but I would wake up with anxiety and not that I was anxious for any one thing. It was just like, I could feel I had a little bit more breath in my chest. Um, the heart rate was a little bit more, um, even though my blood pressure wasn't up, that's kind of the way it felt. And I didn't really think much of it because it was more of an annoyance than anything else. Um, who doesn't like sleep? That's why I wasn't tired. And, And so this went on for probably, February, March, or that January, February timeframe, uh, up until um, probably early May. And a friend of mine, the same friend of mine that introduced me to DNRS, sent me a YouTube video of you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's like, 
here, check this guy out. Check Dan out. This sounds pretty similar to your story and see what you get. And so I started watching um, your videos and I, I never heard it put into like perceived danger pain, like, like that, that fear, like things are threats. Mm -hmm. Like you perceive almost the entire world as a threat, right. some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. And at that point, wow, that was another click for me as well too. I was like, Oh, and in fact, I, it was, it was right at the, the end of May. And, um, you know, I started, I watch your videos every morning. Um, one thing I, I will say this is that when I started the D the, this journey of, um, I don't want to use the word healing either, but this recover, whatever, this journey to good health, right? Sure. Because I was every, every, everything I did in the past was like bondage, all these things I have to do. And I told myself, I am not going to read this book. I'm not going to Google. I'm not going to do this. I am going to just trust the process mm -hmm. and I'm not going to do any of this stuff. And that has been very beneficial as well, too. So I, I haven't, you know, like Sarno's books. I've not read any. I okay. have, I, I have, I have, I have a one book on brain neuroplasticity. So I'm going all off of YouTube and DVDs and, and blogs or, you know, your success stories, you know, that's another huge one. It's for all yeah. those that you have done a success story. Hearing that is so impactful because it provides you hope. And I started watching your videos and it and really was that accurate knowledge and that speaking to the brain. Mm -hmm. And after incorporating just a simple mechanism, I mean, it just keeps going down. So throughout this summer, I had over the, over the 4th of July uh, on vacation. So a lot, a lot of the environmental stressors that I would normally see, you know, were totally gone. And for a week straight, I didn't have any symptoms. I never stretched in the morning. I never stretched at night. Nothing. I need to. There was nothing wrong with your body. Correct. And <laughs> that, you want to talk about validation there. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, so that was in July. We're in September now. That's, you know, just two short months away. Um, ever since actually that, that vacation where I kind of proved it to myself, I don't really do any self-care. I mean, I do self-care, but nothing to manage my symptoms. Everything I do is to, because I know it's a healthy thing to do, just in general. And so I would say where I am right now, I mean, the last two months, in the last three, four months has been just profound. Um, I get very little symptoms, if ever, but... Mm -hmm it always comes back to these simple things that you can incorporate. Like what brain, why are you thinking that way? You're totally safe. There's nothing with this that, that would make you even think. And, and it's amazing how that can actually have such a quick impact on your symptoms. Very quick. I mean, right away. It takes some time, but you know, as you keep doing this, it gets easier and easier and easier. And, mm -hmm. I, I remember thinking, um, thinking months ago, you know, like six, seven months ago, like how is my brain ever going to think differently? Cause this is the way it is, but you know, it happens with repetition and accurate knowledge and something you said, Dan, uh, in a video, I'm sure you've said it multiple times, but this is probably a couple of months. I heard probably the first time was when people say, well, it's my brain. I can't stop thinking that way or it, my brain won't stop thinking that way. And your response is it's your brain. Yeah, whose brain is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that's pretty empowering, you know, to, to, to know that you can do that. And mm -hmm. I would say probably the biggest thing recently, uh, and I was out mowing the lawn one day and I had this thought is that uh, because as, as these thoughts that would come in, I mean, there's, there's still effort involved here. Um, 
like stop thinking that way. That's just that's silly, Nathan. Don't don't think that way. You 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 know it's not real. You, you know what it causes. Why would you ever want to do that? I kind of turned. I kind of flipped the coin on the other side and was like, okay, instead of just pushing thoughts away, I'm going to turn it into something positive. So it, instead of like avoiding thoughts, I more embrace them now. And, and some of that thinking and it, and it has just helped even in the last couple of weeks just completely change my mindset even more in regards to how I look at things. Because in the past, yeah, I used to be fearful of everything. I would, I would, I would play out the worst case scenario, like not even rational worst case scenario. And then I think I would believe that it would actually happen and it never happened. So why would I continually think that way? <laughs> and so, you know, I look back, I didn't have a book here. Uh, I know some people do, but in one year, I, I have went from desperation to the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life. Awesome. Period. And, you know, I, I am so thankful for you and others that um, are, are really willing because the, uh, there's a certain level of, it's, I don't know, you, you kind of sticking it out there to a certain extent you know, um, some vulnerability, you know, being more, a little bit more vulnerable. And because one thing I found through this whole process is honesty is you have to be honest, especially with yourself. And, and, and that was, I gotta admit, that was a little tough. Like, okay, you really gotta be honest here. You gotta admit that. And now that you admit that you gotta own that. And now you gotta do something with that. What are you going to do with it? And mm -hmm. That was tough for a while. I, I do admit there was this one point where, okay, I just want the blue pill. Somebody give me the blue pill back, you know, but no, it, you know, it, it's so worth it. And, you know, I've, I've spent a mortgage. Um, I bet. Lost a family, um, things like that. But wow. I've gained so much that I am just so grateful for. And I interface with so many people and I'm, there are so many people that have TMS. Oh my goodness. It's just, you know, I mean, I, I walk, you know, once you've done this and you've experienced it and you understand it, when you just meet people, you have an understanding. I know that they can take the fit test and, and these other ones. Right. But just your intuition is like, uh, you might have something else going on here. And, and, so I do have some people in my life that I, I think this is probably what they have. And I've been trying to share it with them and trying to help them understand that there is hope and that there is a way and there's, there's nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. And um, yeah, I just hope to continue to do that and, and really not forsake all of this journey. I, I've heard some people say that, you know, this is the biggest blessing I've ever created that's ever happened to me. Some have said, well, it's the biggest nightmare. I would never want to relive it. And clearly I, I don't want to relive any, you know, anything, but I will say that, you know, when you really look back, you can see all the benefit that's come out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just very blessed for that. And, you know, I just want to let, you know, people know that you're not alone. There's hope and there's nothing right. wrong with you. And Dan, I would just like to thank you for one, for this opportunity, because actually this was a big part of um, a fear to a certain extent. I mean, when you declare yourself healthy, you got to own that now, right? Sure. So this, this was a big part of it. And so I just like to thank you for your, you know, your, your daily videos, um, your care, your love, your understanding, the simplicity you put into it, because I think that makes it a lot easier to understand. It's sure. a lot easier to apply. So I just thank you so much. Yeah, I totally appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, you know, if we just kind of blow through it, the low back pain, deep pain behind the calf, the face, neck tightness, all that kind of stuff, the digestive, the slow digestion, um, insomnia, are all of those things mostly resolved at this point? Gone. When the brain feels safe, the systems work as designed. All of them. Yep. Yeah, and when you amazing. feel safer, you can fall asleep because you're not laying in bed and the brain's not thinking, don't go to sleep. There's something bad going to happen. 
Right. I mean, that's just a simple, stupid explanation of insomnia, but usually it's fear-based. It's something bad's going to happen. And um, that's amazing. All of the symptoms are gone. And so this stuff started early, you know, so what about 20 years, you said 26 yeah, years, 20 years. Yeah. And God, so, you know, it took me from once you learned that you weren't broken. Correct. Yeah. And I was, you know, it took me a little while to kind of get the engine going, <laughs> but once it started going and I could get the mindset there, it made it's just so much easier. And if you just stick to it and you follow accurate knowledge and the re the, the affirmation to yourself, it just kind of, it feeds on itself then moving forward. Yeah. And we can change our thinking from the catastrophic fearful stuff to holy cow, I'm really not broken. So what the heck am I thinking about this horror movie stuff in my head for? I'm going to focus on, you know, how can I have some fun today? What can I do today that's productive, useful, connection with others? So listen, man, I appreciate that. Anything else you want to share with the audience? Because we're good to go. I mean, you, you covered a lot of this stuff. I don't really see any huge you know, uh, teaching points to make with this because it was kind of a, a classic horror show, found out about this mind-body stuff, started learning, got some little more direction along the way. And before you know it, things are just better. And so now you're not in bondage anymore. You've got freedom of movement, freedom of thought, freedom from fear. Uh, it's not just physical bondage, but it's also the mental catastrophic thinking and the fear-based stuff. Um, so yeah, now you get to think about it and say, what do I want to be when I grow up? Well, you know, so that's <laughs> interesting. You bring that up because, you know, if I'm just honest with myself, fear motivated me, motivated to me where I am today. Mm -hmm. right? I, I, just trust me, just sure. when I look back, and, and I've been able to understand and, and, you know, understand some emotions, understand some relationships, understand some of those, understand what made me move. Well, if, if all, if that was fear of whatever it is, um, well, what could you possibly be capable of then? Because from a success standpoint, if I may say that in life and things like that, I, it, that, I mean, I feel pretty blessed with with what i've been able to accomplish if i may use those words you know it got me here so it's like okay now when you actually have um a more noble motivation i will say love uh desire to do things you want to do you know now what and so old me would have been looping on that and and now i can just you know i want to live life just the way it is and and enjoy the things I have. And if something were to come up that really convicts me, inspires me to do, I would consider it or, or, or whatever, right? But I'm not in a hurry anymore to get to that next one where I was for pretty much my entire life. Sure. So. That's awesome, yeah. man. The future's wide open. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 st I'll, I'll, I'm still kind of a shock and awe there, though. There, there is this, like, this, like this is absolutely amazing. But believe it, it's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. absolute proof that you can have 20 years of, you know, horror. And within a reasonably short period of time, things can start to shift. And then it just keeps getting better and better and better until I'm sure there are some days where you probably don't even think about it much. You're just up and yeah. you're doing your thing. And it's like not even on the back, you know, in the back of your mind. Um, of course, I'm aware of this stuff because I teach it every day and I work with clients every day. But, you know, I don't go through my days thinking about whether or not my back's going to hurt me. I just get up and I go. Right. It's not a thought anymore. You know, how many times did you use to wake up and go body scan what's going on? Oh, yeah. And so you can get to that point where the fear level drops to nothing or almost nothing. And when you're not afraid of it, you're not looking at it or looking for it. And at that point you can say, all right, well, what do I want to and need to do this year or this day? And, and you just, 
get back to living your life. So I like the fact that you didn't create a new uh, routine or ritual surrounding TMS because a lot of people do that. I, what you were I, doing I, before with your stretching and your this and your chiropractic and massage and scheduled appointments all week long and you know cash going out the door and you had a routine, the TENS units, the this, the whatever it is. Um, some people will say, okay, TMS, I want to get better. I want to get better quick. I want to do it right. So let me spend time doing meditation, breath work, somatic tracking, you know, and all these various TMS protocols. And let me listen to podcasts and let me listen to videos and let me read books. And, you know, I've got people saying, Dan, I've read these three books. Which one should I read next? I'm like, well, do you understand the concept? Yeah. Stop reading. Yeah. Implement. <laughs> and so people actually have like healing routines that last hours a day. And some people literally say, actually I had a guy years ago say, I'm going to quit my job so I can dedicate a hundred percent of my time to healing. And I'm sitting there going, bad idea. I told him, don't do it. That will cause you to focus more and more and more on your symptoms. Um, so we don't need to do this full time. This doesn't take any extra time out of our day. Right. It takes awareness of what's going on. Where are my thoughts going? What are my emotions doing? Awareness of my physical body. Am I tight and tense? So let me just relax and breathe. This doesn't take any more time to say, I'm not worried about my back. I'm good. I'm good. Then it does. Oh my God, my back. Same time. One leads to a comfortable body. The other one leads to ouch. And so TMS does not require a huge commitment of time. It's accurate knowledge, clarity of thought, clarity of the message that you're sending to your own brain. Once you do that consistently, eventually the brain goes, wow, look at this. Nathan's not even concerned anymore about his back. So the brain, I can settle down. I don't have to be as hypervigilant. And so it's beautifully simple. It is challenging to implement, as you know, and yeah. it does get easier with repetition and practice. Um, so you're a great case study in grabbing onto this stuff and just embracing it and making a commitment to yourself to say, this is it. This is what I'm doing. Because as long as you're wavering back and forth and, you know, continuing to run to doctors and maybe I need one more MRI, you're not really convincing. Your brain is not going to buy that message if you keep on wavering back and forth. You learned the knowledge, you made a decision, and you kind of stuck with it. And as a result, you came out the other end. So beautiful stuff, man. Yeah, well, it, it's... It's been pretty incredible. I mean, it I, I, incredible good. Um, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. So, you know, people that sit on the fence with it. I So my the thought I have in my mind, like when I watch your videos in the morning, you, and you'll say this, you know, like this person's not really sure. Well, did you take the assessment? Did you score one on it or, you know, whatever it may be? And I, I, I always think to myself a little bit. So if you've had a taste of symptom free or reductions in symptoms, just period, right? How can you almost not fully buy in to TMS? Mm -hmm. I, I, I always kind of wonder that myself, but I've always been a pretty binary person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm either like all in or I'm not in at all. Type you said thing. you're an engineer, right? Correct. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But, you know, that certainly served you well in this case. But for anybody watching, you don't have to be an engineer to get this stuff. Yeah. You know, you just got to be aware, learn the accurate knowledge and make a decision that, yes, this is it. You know, today was all about today's video is all about laying the foundation, which is the accurate knowledge. What yep. is this mind body stuff? What does perceived danger pain even mean? How does it work? How does the system work? And then accept that that's what's going on for you right? That's yep. the foundation. From there, it becomes so much easier to send the right message to the brain that goes, hey, you know, brain, I know my back's hurting right now, but nothing's going on. 
nothing bad is happening. And it shouldn't hurt today more than yesterday because nothing happened to my body in between. So it's clearly a brain thing. And so shh, we're good. There's nothing wrong. That's so much easier when you have the foundational knowledge of what's actually going on and you kind of accept that, yeah, that's definitely me. So beautiful stuff, man. I guess we will wrap this up. Thank you so much for sharing your story with the, uh, with the audience here. And um, if I can ever do anything for you, you know where to find me, just reach out. And uh, thank you once again, Nathan. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks right. to everybody out there too. So, all right. You have Take a great care. day. Have a great weekend. Right. Bye-bye.